Hello class! Well, it's time for the new unit. As always, this is American English File, second edition, book three, student book, part 8b. What's the right job for you? Everyone, look at the pictures. What do you see? Hmm, some people working, work-life balance. All right, so as you can see today, we're going to talk about jobs. Now, I have some questions for you. Take your time. Let's read the questions together. The first question is, what do you do? What's your job? Do you like your job? What is a nine to five? A job or a business? What's your choice? How can we make a lot of money, especially in this inflation? Hard work or smart work? Do jobs really care about us? What is your dream job or business? Do you have a good head for business? What business would you like to work in? And can you write a business plan? All right. As always, you can add your own questions as well. Now, you know what to do. Speak and have fun. Share your ideas. This is your gig. Part one, vocabulary, work. Everyone, I need you to look at the picture story, all right? Match the sentences A to I with pictures 1 to 9. All right, this is your gig. Take your time and do it yourself. No help from anyone. Very good. Now, let's listen and check. Let's go. 4.41 Claire worked for a marketing company. She had to work very hard and work overtime. She made a good salary, but she didn't like her boss. They had an argument and Claire was fired. She was unemployed and had to look for a job. She applied for a lot of jobs and sent in resumes. She had some interviews, but didn't get the jobs. She decided to set up an online business selling birthday cakes. Her business is doing very well. Claire is a success. All right, very good. But that was the first part. Follow me. Now, verb phrases for work. Everybody, I need you to complete the verb phrases with a word or phrase from the list. For example, look at the first one. Dan has to work a lot of overtime. He has to work extra hours. All right, very good. So work is crossed out once. You can use it twice, actually. Very good. Take your time. Stop the video and do it yourself. Very good. Now, if you have done it, I need you to listen and check. Let's do it together. 4.42 Work. Verb phrases. 1. Dan has to work a lot of overtime. He has to work extra hours. 2. Matt got promoted last week. He was given a more important job. 3. Most nurses have to work shifts. Sometimes they work during the day and sometimes at night. 4. A man in our department was fired yesterday. He lost his job because of poor performance. 5. Colin was downsized last month. He lost his job because the company didn't need him anymore. 6. The politician is going to resign. He has decided to leave his job. 7. Lillian is going to retire next month. 
She's 65 and she's going to stop working. 8. Angela has set up a business to sell clothes online. She had the idea and has started doing it. 9. Everyone in the office has to take a training course. They need to learn how to use the new software. 10. She applied for a job. She replied to an advertisement and sent in her resume. Okay, very good. In here, just the, this one is very uh, interesting, was downsized. So the company becomes smaller and they let go of uh, some of the employees. Well done. You did great. More and more exercises. Everybody, match the adjectives and definitions. Okay? For people, for a job or work. And after that, complete the sentences with the correct prepositions. For example, I work for a multinational company. Take your time, stop the video, and do it yourself. No help from anyone. And if you have done it, check with your friends, put your heads together, learn together. Now let's listen and check. Let's go. 4.43 Saying what you do. A. 1. I'm unemployed. 2. He's self-employed. 3. She's well qualified. 4. It's a temporary job. 5. It's a part time job. B. 1. I work for a multinational company. 2. I'm in charge of the marketing department. 3. I'm responsible for customer loans. 4. I'm in school. 5. I'm in my third year. Brilliant. But we're not done. Word building. Now I need you to make nouns from the following verbs by adding ment, shen, or asian, and make any other necessary changes. For example, promote. Promotion. The same happens here. Make nouns for the people who do the jobs by adding er, or, ian, or ist. All right? And make any other necessary changes. For example, science, scientist. Easy, right? Take your time, like the exercise before, do it yourself. No help from your friends. Now let's check. 4.44 Word building. A. 1. Promote. Promotion. 2. Apply. Application. 3. Retire. Retirement. 4. Employ. Employment. 5. Qualify. Qualification. 6. Resign. Resignation. Huh? B. 1. Science. Scientist. 2. Law. Lawyer. 3. Music. Musician. Mm -hmm. Four. Pharmacy. Pharmacist. Five. Farm. Farmer. Six. Translate. Translator. Well done. You did great. Awesome. Now, job or work. I'm looking for work. I'm looking for a job. Work is an uncountable noun and has no plural. All right? 
not I'm looking for a work. No. Job is a countable noun. You can count it. There are several jobs available in this company. And that's all there is to it for vocabulary. Part 2. Pronunciation and speaking. Everybody underline the stressed syllable in each word. Use the phonetics to help you. All right, this is your gig, but let's do it together. Everybody, listen. 4.45 1. Apply 2. Salary 3. Downsize 4. Experience 5. Overtime 6. Permanent 7. Qualifications 8. Resign 9. Retire 10. Temporary Well, that was easy, wasn't it? But let's speak. For the first part, do you know anybody who is applying for a job? What kind of job? Do you know anybody who is doing a temporary job? What's that job? Do you know anybody who has a part-time job? What hours does he or she work? Do you know anybody who is self-employed? What does he or she do? Do you know anybody who has been promoted recently? What to? Do you know anybody who was fired from his or her job or was downsized? Why? And do you know anybody who has just retired? How old is he or she? Take your time and write your answers to these questions. Very good. Now, think of somebody you know who has a job. Prepare your answers to the questions below. What does he or she do? Where does he or she work? In an office, at home, etc. What qualifications does he or she have what hours does he or she work does he or she have to work overtime does he or she make a good salary does he or she like the job why or why not and would you like to do his or her job why or why not answer all these questions one by one and speak with your friends compare your answers Share your experiences. You're smart. All the way to part three, grammar, gerunds, and infinitives. All right, very good, everybody. The right job for you. Match your personality to the job. Complete the right job for you questionnaire by putting the verbs into the correct form. The gerund, the ing form, or infinitive. For example, to work. To plus the verb. Take your time and do it yourself. Very good. Very good. Very nice. You can also stop the video. Now, check your answers with your friends. All right. So, number one, I'd like to work as a part of a team. Number two, I enjoy helping people with their problems. Number three, I don't mind not earning a very large salary. Number four, I'm good at listening to people. Number five, I'm good at making quick decisions. Number six, taking risks doesn't worry me. Number seven, I'm happy to work by myself. Number eight, I'm not afraid of managing large amounts of money. Number nine, I'm good at expressing myself. Gerund, again, I always try to follow my instincts, to follow, infinitive, to plus the verb. Number 11, it's important for me to be creative. Number 12, I enjoy improvising, improvise, to do something without any preparation. Number 13, doing complex calculations is not difficult for me. Number 14, I enjoy solving logical problems. Number 15, I find it easy 
to understand theoretical principles. And the last one, 16, I'm able to calculate space and distance. That was good for the first part. Now, I need you to read the questionnaire again and check only the sentences that you strongly agree with. You accept, you say that it's true for you. Okay, very good. After that, I need you to discuss your preferences with your friends. This is your gig. I'll wait. A few moments later. Now that was a very good discussion, wasn't it? Now, let's do this one together. Look at the sentences in the questionnaire. Complete the rules with the gerund or the infinitive. The gerund, as I told you, is the ing form. The infinitive is two plus the verb. So, after some verbs, enjoy, don't mind, what do we use? For example, I enjoy helping people. Yeah, we use the gerund. Number two, after some verb like uh, would like, what do we use? Let's see, would like, would like, I'd like to work. Yeah, we use the infinitive. After adjectives, use adjectives. I'm happy to work by myself. Infinitive. After prepositions, use prepositions. Let's see. I'm good at making, all right, we use the gerund. As the subject or of a phrase or sentence, okay, taking risks doesn't worry me. Yeah, the gerund again. Well done, you did great. Now let's review what we learned together. My smart friends, listen. 4.46 1. I'm not very good at remembering names. Katie's given up eating junk food. 2. Driving at night is very tiring. Shopping is my favorite thing to do on weekends. 3. I hate not being on time for things. I don't mind getting up early. Okay, very nice. Now look, we use the gerund, verb, plus ing after prepositions and phrasal verbs as the subject of a sentence after some verbs like hate spend don't mind we reviewed this in the previous section common verbs that take the gerund include admit avoid deny dislike enjoy feel like finish hate keep like love mind miss practice prefer recommend spend time stop suggest and phrasal verbs like give up or go on and etc but you don't need to memorize all of them all i want from you is to just make sentences and use them now the negative of gerund is not plus verb plus ing not the infinitives listen again 4.47 1. my apartment is very easy to find 2. Simon is saving money to buy a new car. 3. My sister has never learned to drive. 4. Try not to make noise. Okay, very good. So we use the infinitive after adjectives to express a reason or purpose. Or after some verbs, for example, want, need, learn. All right? Common verbs that take the infinitive include can't afford or afford, agree, decide, expect, forget, help, hope, learn, need, offer, plan, pretend, promise, refuse, remember, seem, try, want, would like. But I told you, you don't need to memorize them. You just need to make sentences. The negative in the infinitive form is not to plus the verb more verbs take the infinitive than the gerund and these common verbs can take either or either the infinitive or gerund with no difference in meaning start begin continue for example in, it started to rain or it started raining they have the same meaning and you can use the both forms the gerund or the infinitive don't go anywhere there's more another thing to add 
is the verb plus person plus infinitive. We also use the infinitive after some verbs. For example, ask, tell, want, would like plus person. Can you ask the manager to come? She told him not to worry. I want you to do this now. We'd really like you to come. All right. Now the base form. Everybody listen. 4.48 1. I can't drive. We must hurry. 2. She always makes me laugh. My parents didn't let me go out last night. All right. Just like the examples, we use the base form after most modal and auxiliary verbs. For example, didn't or can't, right? And after make and let. For example, she always makes me laugh or my parents didn't let me go out last night. Verbs that can take a gerund or an infinitive, but the meaning is different. Try to be on time. Make an effort to be on time. Try doing yoga. Do it to see if you like it. Remember to call him. Don't forget to do it. I remember meeting him years ago. I have a memory of it. So they have the different meanings. Be careful with them. Now, let's practice together. Let's get better. Here we go. As always, we have two sets of exercises. The first one, circle the correct form. The infinitive or the gerund. For example, I'm in charge of recruiting new staff. All right, the rest is yours. Part B, complete with a verb from the list in the correct form. For example, I'd like to set up my own company. So set up is crossed out and it's in infinitive form. All right, you know the drill. Now, stop the video, take your time, and do it yourself. I'll be waiting. If you have done it, I need you to check your answers with your friends. Yeah, put your heads together. Very good. Number one, it's important for me to spend time with my family. Number two, applying for a job can be complicated. The next one. Number three, the manager asked me not to say anything about the downsizing. My boss wants me to start work earlier. Number five, be careful not to ask her about her boyfriend. They broke up. Number six, we kept working until we finished. Number seven, Dave is very good at solving logic problems. Number eight, the best thing about weekends is not going to work. Number nine, Layla gave up modeling when she had a baby number 10 i took a training course to learn about the new software all right now the next exercise number one my parents are planning to retire before they are 65. number two rob spends three hours commuting to work and back every day number three mark's wife told him not to worry about the problems he had at work Number four, did you remember to lock the door? Number five, in the end, I decided not to buy the shoes because they were very expensive. Number six, the manager lets us leave early on Fridays. Number seven, all employees must wear a jacket and tie at work. Number eight, please try not to make any more mistakes in the report. And number nine, I don't mind working overtime during the week. All right, you did great. Well done. Everyone, do you remember this one? Yeah. You had some checks. You checked some of the options. For example, 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 12, 13 to 16. Now, I need you to check your answers with your friends again. If you have the most check marks in 1 to 4, the best job for you would be in the caring professions. If you are good at science, you could consider a career in medicine. For example, becoming a doctor or a nurse. Alternatively, teaching or social work are areas that would suit your personality. Hmm. Alright. 
If you have the most check marks in 528, you should consider a job involving numbers, for example, becoming an accountant or working in, a, in the stock market. The world of business would also probably appeal to you, especially sales or marketing. If you have the most check marks in 9 to 12, you need a creative job. Depending on your specific talents, you might enjoy a job in the world of music, art or literature. Areas that would suit you include uh, publishing, journalism, graphic design, fashion or the music industry. And if you have the most checks in 13 to 16, you have an analytical mind. You would be suitable for a job in computer science or engineering. You also have a have good a spatial sense which would make architecture and related jobs another possibility very good everybody so which job is the best for you discuss it with your friends and as the closing parts i have a writing exercise for you choose five of the circles below and write something in them for example something you enjoy doing on sunday morning somebody you find very easy to talk to Something you are planning to do in the summer. A job you hate doing in the house. A country you'd like to visit in the future. A sport, activity or hobby you love playing or doing but never have time for. Something you're afraid of doing. Somebody you wouldn't like to go on vacation with. And a job you'd love to do. Alright. Write your preferences. Very good. Now in groups or pairs. You and your friend. I need you to... Tell all these to your friends and compare your answers. Speak it out. All the way to the reading part, part four. Everybody, read the first paragraph of an article about the TV show Shark Tank and answer the questions. All right, the first paragraph, everybody. Take your time and do it. I'll wait. A few minutes later. Very nice, you're back. So, who are the sharks? Tell me. They are very successful business people. And what is their tank? The room where they meet the contestants. And how does the show work? The contestants make a presentation to the sharks. Who then ask them questions and decide whether or not to invest in the contestants' business. So, you present your business and... They decide whether they want to invest or not. Now, I need you to look at the photos and read about three products that were presented on the show. For example, a device for a guitar, baby bips, and shrimp burgers. Which product has been very successful, although the sharks didn't invest in it? And do the rest. Take your time. Read the article completely. Then I read it for you. Then we answer together. Take your time. Six and a half hours later. Okay, you're back. So let's read it together. Shark Tank. Damon John and Barbara Corcoran have been sharks on the show since it started. Mark Cuban appeared on the show since the beginning but became a regular shark in 2012. Shark Tank is a US TV show with similar versions in many different countries. On the US show, contestants have about 10 minutes to present their business ideas to five very successful business people. These people are nicknamed the Sharks. And the intimidating room where they meet the contestants is the Tank, the Sharks home. The Sharks, who are often multimillionaires, are prepared to invest money in any business that they believe might be a success. In return, they take a share of the profits. The contestants are usually entrepreneurs, product designers, or people with a new idea for a service. After the contestants have made their presentation, the sharks ask them questions about the product and its possible market, and then say if they are prepared to invest or not. If they are not convinced by the presentation, they say the dread words, I'm out. So far, the Sharks have agreed to invest over $6.2 million in products, companies, and ideas presented on Shark Tank. They were very happy with their investment in Travis Perry, a guitar player from Alabama who had the idea of Chord Buddy, a device that helps people learn to play the guitar. 
he came into the tank with some guitars that had the device attached to them shark robert periovich i don't know i'm not very good with names apologize i apologize immediately sense an opportunity in the charismatic travis and agreed to invest one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in his product a year later court buddy had made over 1.5 million dollars in sales and has john rich a famous country singer representing the product travis is now running an impressive and profitable company susie taylor wanted the sharks to invest in her high-tech baby bib company the bibs are made from high quality materials that don't stain nobody was enthusiastic and the sharks rejected their idea but Susie hasn't given up since appearing on the show tv show orders from Susie bibs increased and she has been contacted by other investors and that is what makes a real entrepreneur he or she never gives up if sharks invest in him or her there is a chance he or she will become successful but if they leave the tank empty-handed, the determination to make it on their own is as great as ever. And the last one, and of course, the sharks don't always get it right. Cook Sean Davis product, Gourmet Shrimp Burgers, was rejected. One shark said, I'll buy the product, but I don't really know the food business well enough to make the prof product successful. Another shark said, I just don't like shrimp at all. So based on that, I'm out. A third shark said, getting shrimp and keeping it cold makes the product too expensive for the public to buy. Today, Davis's company is worth $6 million and his shrimp burgers are sold in supermarkets across the US. Well done. Very good. Now, which product has been very successful although the sharks didn't invest in them i think it was the shrimp burgers the last one and which product was presented by a musician a hey, the court buddy i think yeah which product was presented by a female baby bibs which product has a celebrity representing the product again i think the the get that guitar thing court buddy which product is practical for moms and kids b and which product is now sold in many US states? The last one, shrimp burgers. And one more thing, everybody. Which, if any of these products, would you be interested or definitely not interested in buying and why? And would you invest if you had the money? Words with different meanings. Look, sometimes the same words can have two completely different meanings. For example, I work in a store. It's my job and my laptop doesn't work it's broken all right so pay attention to this one as well now we're gonna test it together follow me okay you're here with a partner say what the difference in meaning is between the pairs of sentences you can also use daddy google to help you i'll be waiting 12 seconds later now let's check them out one by one all right to run a business to be in charge of a business to run a marathon, to move using your legs, going faster than when you walk. Or running a marathon, it's you know, obvious. To be fired, to lose your job, to fire, to shoot a bullet from a gun. Number three, a market for something, demand. A number of people who want to buy something. A market, the open area or building where people sell vegetables. A company. A business organization that makes money by producing or selling goods or services. And good company means pleasant to be with. And that's all there is to it for the reading part. Congratulations, you made it so far. Well done. Now, look at the pictures. What do you see? These are two other business ideas that were presented on Shark Tank, the show that I told you. All right, now you're going to listen and tell me what is special about them? What makes them special? Why should they invest? All right, let's do it. 4.49 Johnson Bailey presented Man Candles. He argued that most candles smell like perfume and are designed for women. One day he was having some friends over to watch a football game and his house smelled like old Chinese food and dirty clothes. The only candle he had at the time 
was a vanilla-scented one, and he didn't want his house to smell like perfume. That's why Bailey invented manly candles that smell like things men enjoy. Basketballs, golf courses, the beach, popcorn, and barbecue sauce. He even has a horrible smelling candle you can burn to get people you don't like, perhaps your mother-in-law, out of your house. He tried to convince the sharks to invest by passing out his candles and asking them to smell them. The sharks most wanted to smell the bad candle, which is Bailey's best-selling candle. Kim Nelson's idea was a cake business that sells homemade cakes across the U.S. These cakes are made from all natural ingredients, like fresh oranges in the O.O. Orange Cake, or one pound of grated carrots in Daisy's Carrot Cake. Kim came up with the idea because many people don't have the time or the talent to bake a delicious homemade cake for special occasions like birthdays, graduations, or anniversaries. Kim says that she has a talent for baking cakes, and more importantly, she feels it's her passion. Kim's products are currently sold online in her local area, but she would like to increase production and sell more cakes across the U.S. The cake business is called Daisy Cakes. All right, very good. So what makes them special? Do you have any idea? I need you to check your answers with your friends. Well, the man candles have scents that men would like more than women. And the daisy cakes are homemade from fresh ingredients and they are perfect for people who want homemade dessert but don't have the time to make it. All right. I need you to listen again and tell me, do you think the sharks invested in both of them? neither of them or one of them which if they did listen and write your ideas 4.49 johnson bailey presented man candles he argued that most candles smell like perfume and are designed for women one day he was having some friends over to watch a football game and his house smelled like old chinese food and dirty clothes the only candle he had at the time was a vanilla scented one and he didn't want his house to smell like perfume. That's why Bailey invented manly candles that smell like things men enjoy. Basketballs, golf courses, the beach, popcorn and barbecue sauce. He even has a horrible smelling candle you can burn to get people you don't like, perhaps your mother-in-law, out of your house. He tried to convince the sharks to invest by passing out his candles and asking them to smell them. The sharks most wanted to smell the bad candle, which is Bailey's best-selling candle. Kim Nelson's idea was a cake business that sells homemade cakes across the U.S. These cakes are made from all natural ingredients, like fresh oranges in the O.O. Orange Cake or one pound of grated carrots in Daisy's Carrot Cake. Kim came up with the idea because many people don't have the time or the talent to bake a delicious homemade cake for special occasions like birthdays, graduations, or anniversaries. Kim says that she has a talent for baking cakes, and more importantly, she feels it's her passion. Kim's products are currently sold online in her local area, but she would like to increase production and sell more cakes across the U.S. The cake business is called Daisy Cakes. All right, very good, well done. Now, I need you to listen to see what happens. Were you right? What influenced the shark's choice? Okay, so which one did they invest in and what influenced their choice? Let's see. 4.50 The sharks asked Johnson a lot of questions. For example, they asked him how much the candles sell for, 10 to $12 a candle, and how much money they made in sales the year before. 
$53,000. Johnson explained that, currently, he and his wife had put over $40,000 of their own money into this product. The Sharks also asked how the candles were made, to which he answered that he poured them all into their containers by himself. He didn't have any help in his entire candle-making process. In the end, they decided that they weren't interested. Their main reason was they thought the business just wasn't big enough or interesting enough, so they couldn't believe that it would ever make any money. The Sharks were impressed by Kim's presentation, and they immediately asked to try her cakes. They really loved her cakes and complimented her on their fresh and delicious taste. Even though the male sharks liked Kim's product, they were concerned that her company had reached its potential, making a respectable $27,000 in the last three months. In the end, Barbara Corcoran, the only female shark, decided to invest $50,000 in Kim's business because she thought there was a market for Kim's product. And since then? Kim's Daisy Cakes are now being sold online across the U.S. She was able to pay Barbara Corcoran back in only three weeks, and she has expanded her business by offering new products like lemon curd. Although the Sharks thought Johnson's candles were funny, it's a good thing they didn't invest in his company. Johnson's website has been shut down, and his candles have disappeared from store shelves. Okay, so I thought the same. Only one shark invested in Kim's cake, even though the male sharks liked Kim's cake and even went back for se seconds, they didn't uh, think her company would make much money. Barbara Corcoran thought there was a market for Kim's product and she invested $5,000 in it. I think it was $50,000, not $5,000. I'm not sure. Very good. But the other one, they didn't invest anything. Now, do you think either of these products would be successful in your country? Is there a market for them in your country? Discuss them with your friends. You did great. Now, imagine that you're going to appear on this show, Shark Tank. And you want to present your idea, your business idea. It can be a watch, a sandwich, an app, a chair, a dessert a pan, a lamp, a drink, a gadget, or one of your own inventions, okay? Now, you have to present it like this. What is the product? What its name? Who is it for? How much will it cost? Why is it different from other similar products? And do you have an advertising slogan for it? All right? Now, I need you to present your, <laughs> your invention or your idea to your friends and see who's going to invest in it. You can start like this. Good morning, we're going to tell you about our new product. It's this, it's called this. We think it would be popular with this. It's completely different from that. It's better than this. All right, use your imaginations. Maybe in the future, you come up with a good idea and you can find a good investor for it. For example, some multi-millionaire who has extra money invests in your business and you can become rich as well. It's not always the money. Most of it is here. The last set for today, a cover email with your resume. Look at the job advertisement. Which job could you apply for? For example, we are looking for dedicated, enthusiastic and energetic people to work at the upcoming Olympic Games. The, there are opportunities in the following areas. Administration, hospitality and catering, translation and language services, medical support. All applicants must be appropriately qualified and an intermediate level of English is essential. Send your resume and cover letter in English to recruitment at theolympicgames.com. All right. Ricardo Suarez wants to apply for a job and is submitting his resume. Read the cover email to go with it. Circle the best phrase in each pair. For example, dear sir or madam, I am writing... Uh, to apply for a job with the medical support staff at the upcoming Olympic Games. I am a qualified physical therapist and I have been working at a rehabilitation center here since 
January 2006. My English is... No, I speak English fluently. I have attached my resume. I look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely yours, Ricardo Suarez. So you have to write in a formal sense. Now, write a cover email to go with your resume to apply for a job in the next Olympics. Plan what you're going to write. Just exactly like this. This is a cover letter that you attach your resume to. Try to write one and check it for grammar, vocabulary and punctuation and also spelling. This is your homework. And another one done. I know, I know, I, I sometimes upload with delays. I know, I understand that. I've been really busy, but from now on, the show will be steadily growing. Every day, every single day, a new lesson for you guys. Thank you for watching my channel. And if you have a question, as always, you can comment down below and I will try to answer as soon as possible. And if you find my work useful, make sure to share it with your friends as well. Maybe I can help them as well. Until then, my friends, be the light. Do something for the world. Let something from you stay here. Bye-bye.